do you get that now? So those who brought us uh, to this uh, level are never going to be part of those that will take us out of this. And they have no plan to even take you out of anything. People usually say, if you found yourself in a, in a ditch, the best thing for you is to stop digging. But you see us in uh, uh, these criminals in Nigeria, they will take anything and everything, including your life, if it's going to give them anything extra, whatever it is. They will take everything. That is why a retired uh, may guard an illiterate money queen is overseeing a country that are taking decisions that are not in any way in the interest of the people they are leading. For example, apart from the sponsorship of terrorism and coverage of terrorists, pardoning terrorists, they have another war, and it is called economic jihad, economic war. The economic war is that uh, Nigeria is poor, broke, all thanks to the Al Qaeda People's Congress, who created the, who, who expanded the war, so that Nigeria can spend more, and at the same time borrow more. They have no interest of. Uh, building any economy to sustain anybody other than the Bambi Allah economy. Bambi Allah economy where they can say they have given a graduate 10, 10,000 Naira to fight poverty. They have given their traders 20, 20,000 Naira to fight poverty. They have uh, given uh, the poorest people in part of Nigeria 5,000 5, Naira to fight, I mean, to fight poverty. They have created an uh, immediate job called end power that will pay people who are graduates 30,000 Naira to fight poverty. They were planning to take 100 million out of poverty by giving them 55,000 Naira every month. At the end of the day, poverty no die. Even with the prayer points, poverty die, poverty die, poverty die, it no die. Just same way they invested the billions on electricity. And the only thing they got is darkness. They invested billion as well because they looted those billions, by the way. No one invested any goddamn money. They looted the billions and then uh, they got more poverty. They said more Nigerians are poorer than they were six years ago. The legacy of Bukwari. Nigeria is Nigerians are more jobless now. 33 or 34 percent of Nigerians unemployed. That is under Bukhari. But because they are waging economic war, that the Buhari deals, the Cyber barbarians, and their friends, I mean, sorry, and their cousins and nephews, and uh, you know, the rest, they who are the victims of this uh, economic jihad, they have no idea. Unfortunately, a very poor country that is dealing with uh, over 120 million people who are living in extreme poverty, according to the World Poverty Index 2020. God knows how many millions have joined in the last uh, one year alone. That same country, led by these uh, terrorists and these uh, unfortunate uh, criminals, was able to go abroad to go and borrow money to construct rail line from Casina, the desert, to Maradi in Niger Republic, another desert. Why Nigeria will pay for every goddamn penny to build this rail line between these two countries? It is expected to, I mean, it is called the partnership between Nigeria and Niger Republic. Niger will pay no dime. Nigeria had no penny. But they were borrowing money to do that. The same distance between Casina and Maradi is, in fact, longer than between Lagos and Onicha, where a double 
Guecha rail line from Lagos to Onicha will automatically unlock at least another 10 to 15 percent of the economic viability opportunity in that region a bit of a goodwill gesture two billion dollars can buy that goodwill gesture for Nigeria and the one Nigerians who always want to tell us uh, that the Igbos are not wanted at the same time they cannot go just one good gesture from Nigeria if indeed they believe in that one Nigeria one good gesture one rail line that will move from that Lagos some said Mayagun that is even too much we don't even want them to build it for us we just want them to allow us to be able to develop our own uh, water and waterways so that we can build our own uh, seaports dredge our own river link them up to the to the sea close to us bring our importation and our, and our exportation all through our home borders if they will let us do that alone Mayegu, we will unlock 50 percent uh, prosperity opportunity in eastern nigeria many many people who are complaining about the Igbos, they will not have to complain about them anymore that one singular move one singular move to unlock the region they said they are landlocked <laughs> so i'm saying this to you just to compare a poor country like Nigeria, who has no money, and they have uh, millions, over 100 million poor people who have no access to real wealth, opportunity, job, to feed themselves. They are also surrounded by armed, bloody terrorists who are in bed with the same government that took and almost snuff life out of them right now. Think about that. Talking about keeping one Nigeria, one Nigeria. Talking about uh, what does the, what do the Igbo people want? A people, people that run a billions, multi-billion dollar businesses in Nigeria. They run the Lagos seaport, you know that. Until the Abokis who are just the rent seekers there. And we, the Yorubas, eh? Rabbit takers and monitor, monitor there. Our uh, people are there working as uh, supervisors at their own seaports in Yoruba land. Aboki is there collecting all the taxes. Every penny that happens in that place, Igbo man is there trying to clear his container. He is ready to pay every penny, every custom duty, everything is asked. He is ready to bear the cost. Even though he is still going to be profiled, he will pay every penny. He will pay bribe if you ask him for one, just to make sure that you don't interrupt his business. All of this, with all man hour wasted, this can be avoided when they can actually do all their importation directly from all over the world straight to Onicha. No joke. And then these young people that you see and you call criminals or what have you, you don't know what they are, they call them touts, pot touts or pot rats. Yorubas, Awusas, Igbos, and everybody from everywhere, many of them will return back and pick up a decent, nice paying jobs at their different ports in Eastern Nigeria without having to be in Lagos. Think about that. And when they go back, what do you think will happen? Of course, people will have more jobs. Young, young people will become more, more, more productive. Yes, and once they have jobs, they pay more taxes, they consume more, they pay the consumption tax, they pay that your VAT, more money into that region that will never destroy your crate of beer, that will never destroy your crate of alcohol, and at the same time be waiting to be given money every month from the proceeds of alcohol. I am saying this to you now, so as for you to know that the reason why they deliberately, deliberately put Nigeria in this situation, either for those of those who are the terrorists who are waging economic war and those in government who are protecting them and at the same time waging their own policy, economic war, economic policy wars too. They are working for the same thing, just to destroy you, to destroy me. And it's now up to you. Right, I gave an example of borrowing money to build the rail line to Niger Republic. 
at the expense of those who spend the billions and billions and billions of dollars every year and they pay billions and billions and billions of naira as custom duties to this same government in nigeria how about making their business easier because after they come out of that seaport then they still have to deal with the checkpoint of the policemen on the way from lagos to onicha you get to see over 100 checkpoints where they have to bribe and bribe and bribe every value of that business is mostly lost in transit by the time they get to the eastern nigeria where they are needed guess what there will be nothing left to pay to the government of that place it is deliberate if you are an igbo man and you don't know this and you are shouting one nigeria one nigeria i'm sorry i usually say people are ignorant right they are ignorant no you are practically just uh, you know probably not just ignorant you are just a fool you should know this if i have to explain this so long like this on how this uh uh way of uh, waging this uh jihadis as those who are killing and destroying farms that's an economic war you may not know okay put it this way this whole wahala is backed or let me say it's influenced by religion don't let anybody tell you otherwise influenced by religion okay Boko Haram says book, Western education book is Aram, is a sin. Western education is a sin. Don't send your children to school to acquire such education. And Nigeria, as it is, is a caliphate that must, uh, what do you call it? That must uh, be Islamic caliphate. Now, Boko Haram staged their stuff in the Northeast. And today, they are everywhere including in the southwest say southeast uh in the niger delta everywhere they are now okay so those who are protecting them are also waging their own economic war like borrowing debt uh, devaluation of the naira on the development of your infrastructures if they are talking about power your refinery at the end of the day it is pretty much like uh oh boy a doom situation but not for those who are already who have already mentally exited nigeria bokowari has borrowed the people's uh today he has borrowed their tomorrow he has borrowed their lifetime existence he has borrowed the, the life of that of the, your children in that country as we speak today that is also one of the reasons why you have your naira devalued every time bokwari meets any foreign country ambassador or representative he doesn't discuss about anything or now what they can do together to improve any production of anything in nigeria or better anything you know what they discuss do you have any money you are not using this time you can borrow us and since those people always have something to come and take in Nigeria, Bokwari, the Arungun, the, uh, uh, what do you call it? The Taliban in your asshole rock. They borrow anything borrowable. This morning, they said they are already asking for another $4 billion they want to borrow. And they are also looking to borrow another 750 million euros also. And these two borrowing, they are going to happen next month. You and I will read about it. You are going to read uh, the month after that that uh, your dollar, I mean, your naira is now 700 naira to a dollar, and the pound sterling is now 1,000 or 900 naira to a pound. I mean, to, to a pound. You may not know how this is affecting you, or maybe you do, and you are just using the uh, what do you call it? You are using the vibes, and inshallah, or you are using it as well in the blood of jesus and all those things that consoles you that make you forget the danger the consequences of what i've just told you now economic jihad people will lose their jobs people will lose their lives they will lose their life savings people are going to lose their houses you're going to lose a lot with what is still coming the economic crunch called recession is not new to those who can go in and print money do you get that now? There's something called hyperinflation. You will begin to have a lot of money that will become so valueless. And 
people are now advising if you are smart please go and change your money to <laughs> to dollars <laughs> somebody said Mayegu, what do you mean how much am i going to change to a dollar how much do i have and the rest of, i'm talking about those who have money who don't want to lose the value of all of your asset okay i will advise you if you can please put your money in dollars save it if you have your millions of naira somewhere i will advise you save it convert the money into dollars and save it now they are targeting your money in domiciliary account we've been told that's how desperate they are they will borrow anything and by the time they are done eh even many of you will be asking yourselves why does anybody want to be president of nigeria for what exactly because you see that zimbabwe story you have been reading or you witnessed that time eh they are going to become inspirational stories soon you begin to read about how did the zimbabweans survived when the, when the, their currency completely crashed because you know one thing is this there are also sanctions that are still going to be coming the way of nigeria this is not just the war that is coming i mean that they are waging uh on you okay they are waging the war that the consequences they believe that they will never have to bear or have to bear at all and that is where you who don't agree with the People said, you know what? Let's sit at home and not be part of these jargons. Let's uh, stage a one man protest and tell the whole world, especially at the United Nations, to let them know that uh, we have a killer that should never be spared, protected, or what have you. So there are people working day and night to bring a lot of sanctions the way of Nigeria arms embargo, uh, you know, travel ban, arrest warrants on so many actors in Boko Haris government. The world knows them, okay? The, the world knows their role in this issue of insecurity, money laundering, and so many other things. But the consequences of their actions, which is going to affect everything you are holding on to, like hot charcoal right now, we cannot just divide Nigeria. We cannot just talk about this and just say, you know, it has to, all these, your excuses and the rest of that, you will realize that you are holding on to a hot charcoal that you have to drop. At some point, and when you drop it, I hope you won't be so hot to have this scar, a very terrible scar from your stubbornness. When people say, let us begin the process of uh, dismantling this contraption, eh? Some said, no, 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 that is too extreme. We can talk, we should negotiate, we should discuss. But they said they don't want to discuss. They said true federalism is against the north resource control is against the north open grazing is against the north recently but restructuring is completely unacceptable they don't want it and they've just so told you as well that uh, zoning rotating the presidency between the north and the south is unconstitutional even me yet, Yala, that is uh, threatening everybody, giving every, everyone an uh, ultimatum, speaking, you know, spewing uh, fire and brimstone and all of that. The moment Lagos State said, we are going to begin to keep our VAT. And we are going to ban open grazing. Yet, Yala story is changing you, ladies and gentlemen. And I think, I, you know, you would expect me to give you an update, wouldn't you? The same yet allow the terrorists in Nigeria. Now that uh, some of them are beginning to see that, oh boy, this is not good. This is not good. Ondo State says they are going to keep their own too. Ogun State House of Assembly, they are reading this. They are on the second reading now to begin to control their own VAT too. They don't want to contribute anymore. River State, you know them. They have already, they don't, they don't move. Benway said they are also going to work on it and do their own. They don't want to share their money anymore. Even if it's not penny, they don't want to share. They want to use it in Benway State. Uh, Edo State, Benny, they said they are also going to keep their money. So this is now like, oh boy, wait till. 
Meanwhile, before everybody agree to begin to keep their money now, eh? You see that cookie jar where they always have surplus money, that they have a lot of money to spend on terrorism, to fund terrorism in the past six years, especially. Eh? Before these services, they are not contributing any money anymore, which is actually patrick some very, very minute. It's not major money. Okay. The cookie jar don't they dry. Money no they come in any time anymore, like much anymore. To the point that they have to go and print money. Imagine you know, they have to print money in order to be able to give allocation to states. So now that these states are saying we are not giving every penny we contribute and we want to keep it. And please, we want to ban open grazing. You have destroyed our economy enough. You have destroyed our communities enough. We have pretended enough. We may not have all the capacity to fight you as you may think, but trust me, with this law, our people can go ahead now and fight you. That's what they don't know about those laws being passed, anti-open grazing law and the rest of that. So now that uh, the giant, the, the, the big giant, uh, the big elephant in the room, Lagos, said they are not giving their VAT and they've passed the law already. Yet Yala said they want to negotiate too. Yet Yala are no longer threatening people. Go and read the news today. They said, we are ready to negotiate with the South on the issue of open grazing. We want to plead with the South to give us time so that we can talk to our people. We are, we want to, we, we are not fighting anybody. Yeah. Some said Mayegu, Natakia is a lie. I said, but Baba, it's good to see. Say Mayegu is a lie. Wait again in another few days, in another few weeks. They will they will issue another fire, especially if they finally get reassurance with uh, their commander in thief. Bokuari. Once they get something so obvious on the way, right? They will come back and say to her with I said, but no, we enjoy this thing, Baba. Uh -huh. Why you won't be a kill joy? Me yet yala that is calling press conference every now and then, threatening people. They said they want to, they are begging now because it's like uh, the news is now tightening. It's now tightening. As they are bragging, waiting for Bukwari, they're waiting for the National Assembly to help them and stop the South. It's looking like politicians will always be politicians. All talk, no action. It seems that the National Assembly is not really going to be able to change it. All these people are making this law. Very soon, Bokuari may not be here anymore. All these people, something fear happen that all of these people will no longer be there anymore. We better be we better start talking. I said, Papa Moku, enjoy him. Let's enjoy the fact that uh, the people that are bragging are beginning to realize that uh, it won't just be about bragging. They will have to do more than bragging. And they know that they are cowards. You know that they are cowards. All these Fulani terrorists, they are cowards. Number one, they don't, they don't come during the day to come and fight and say, well, yeah, we've come, we'll deal with all. They don't do that. They don't go to where they know that it's well populated. They don't go there. They are a bunch of cowards. Even the fact, despite the fact that they are holding AK-47 guns, they are holding all of this stuff, right? They dare not come and make an attack during the day. They still have to attack isolated places, communities that they know are pretty much cut off either by communication or they have terrible road or the, whatever it is. They will just figure out isolated place and they will go in the middle of the night and they will start killing people there, set their homes ablaze and they will run away. You won't see them. That's how they operate. Why they do that, the military will give them cover. No police will come. No military will come. Nobody will listen to any SOS until the following morning when people will go there. To start picking dead bodies who are the dead bodies children women aged people you know what i'm talking about not people who are fighting them they don't fight during the day bunch of cowards so they know if they don't get all this protection from where they get the protection from if there is no policy that protects them who the hell do they think they are but that's why i said when the southern governors were making those laws we know they don't have the capacity to implement the law
on the other hand, on a second thought, yeah, I believe that uh, it is also a go ahead for our people in Yoruba land to what? To take the laws into their hand because that's what the law says. If you see them anywhere, hold them. Hold them. And do what you think you should do to terrorists. Do it to them. If you feel like handing them over to the police, call your local police station or call Amotekun. If you feel like you have to hand them over to God, then call God and tell them that uh, he should expect a message. It's up to you. That's something about that law. And that is something that the Fulani terrorists themselves fear when there will be no coverage for them from Nigeria. So I love this. I love this. And uh, just same way I love the, uh, the VAT war. They will go to court. They will do all of that. It doesn't matter. It's already law. Okay? And time will get to a place whereby you will realize that uh, even fighting it or fighting uh, this uh, VAT and what have you is not their thing because they don't even understand it. Uh, they only want the money. Now that uh, the uh, southern uh, states are beginning to say, we're not going to give the money again. No matter how little it is, we're not giving it anymore. We, and we don't want to take from anybody anymore. We will improve on our money. Everybody should go and improve on their own uh, consumption taxes. So that you don't go about and give guys like this the go ahead to be destroying people's businesses while you want to share in the proceed of that uh, business like the Taliban of Kano. <laughs> To Audi Villa is similar, I mean, she danced in the image of the Lahir of Manu Rahim. Ah, Mijima, DG, Masigirma, or Goa, they are carrying him by the Miki Tarero, who are the poor. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kamari yende kuka ji bayani kuma kuka gani a yanzu cewa hukumar hizba cikin ayyukanta na dake na badala musamman ma abin da ke kawo maye ko shaye-shaye wanda yanzu ne zai dugunguma kokonuwar dan adam kai duk ma mu bar wannan wannan uwar laifin wanda Allah Do you see that 3600 uh, crates of beer confiscated there by Isba in Kano. Kano State is raising enough, uh, you know, money from consumption tax, VAT, 2.8 billion. That's a lot of money compared to some states that only raised about uh, 90 million, 100 million, a whole state. Consumption tax and all of that. Because religiously, they don't. They are not allowed to take uh, money from alcohol, but they are hypocrites. They are a bunch of uh, hypocrites. Those who will tell you that uh, you are infidel, but yet they have a region that is battling with uh, an endemic drug abuse among uh, young and old in northern Nigeria. I'm talking about something that has become like pandemic drug abuse they were supposed to be so close to god they were supposed to be teaching them a lot about god all those fallacies all those lies even in that same canoe where you have a uh, gandola the babariga mobile uh, banking ceo of Kano, gandola his wife hmm? mandola they call that one madola somebody wrote that on twitter today and he said uh, if uh, gandola is gandola then they should call the wife Madola. Because Madola, who happens to born uh, a son, their son, trust me, this is true life story, oh. son to Gandola, reported his mother, Madola, to EFCC for fraud. Family, today, true life story. They were supposed to be people with morality. They would look at it, they would say, uh, you know what I'm talking about, Abby? When they look at you and they are like, uh, no, the reason why they don't like people, infidel, they call you infidel, unclean. 
people are going to hell. Trust me, these guys are mad, but they are thieves. They are drug addicts. They are arsonists, murderers. I'm talking about the worst of the worst of the worst of the crimes you can think about. And yet, they are so quick to look at and say, hey, your leaders are thieves. That's what they did. They said, Fulani will tell you, your leaders are thieves. We will come and deal with your leaders for you. Criminals to come and deal, terrorists to come and deal with your leaders for you. Gandola's son reported his mother to EFCC. Madola to EFCC. They say, as they say, Gandola, so they say in Kano, Madola is actually the governor. Gandola is uh, the deputy governor. The one you see all the time. The Baba Regala Mobile uh, Banking CEO. The point I'm trying to make here is that uh, I'm just using Kano now. They make a lot of money from a consumption tax. They have a lot of, uh, they have a very good population as well. They claim only Kano can manage to at least pay half salary if that allocation, Bambi Allah from Abuja, failed to come. And the Bambi Allah from Abuja is the money they manage to fraudulently, you know, scoop from uh, southern Nigeria. Something that makes them powerful. And when that money is not there, then you realize that they are actually not powerful. They are not. They will begin to beg. And unfortunately, that doesn't give power to the people of the South. On the second thought, it only gives the power a little bit of a leverage to those who claim to be our political leaders and representatives from the South, those who have failed us and continue to fail us. Do you get that now? That is why some said we shouldn't trust them. I'm only giving you these stories, this point, these links to link them all together that will then take you to your own personal conclusion about the whole scenario. Don't mind me. They might sound their flute to you. They have no money. But they love the power. They have squandered it. They have bankrupted Nigeria. But there's still supposed to be something to sustain them. And that something is that the South is still part of Nigeria. As long as the South is part of Nigeria, it makes the name valid. As long as the name is valid, it can always open doors, including the ability to print money when you need the money and quickly change the money to dollars and move it elsewhere. And the hyperinflation inflation in the country can kill whoever it wants to kill. It doesn't really matter, remember? As long as the jihad is moving, unfortunately. So uh, we say thank you to our people who have made it to uh, to New York today. I believe that uh, right now it is bubbling in New York. I got some video earlier I wanted to share with you, but uh, I'm going to do that some other time when I get uh, more. I want to have more exclusive coverage and all of that of our people that showed up. We want to say thank you to all of you. If you're watching me right now, uh, right there at that uh, UN Center uh, in New York, See, I'm saying thank you to you, and I'm saying hi to you. Uh, and I believe that this protest will last uh, for uh, more than uh, 10 days, which is great. So we'll be covering that, and we'll be getting some report from there. But people are there. Bokwari is in New York. Those of you who are in the, on ground, pay attention. Capture it. If you feel grab them, if you see them anywhere, Olamo, somebody said, if you see Buari, if I see Buari 101, I go beat them. Ah, you go try and say, oh man, Baba, I go beat um, I go beat um, I go beat Buari, Buari go run like thief. So why? Say, you they ask me, show me Buari. Now Buari go tell you why I beat him. So some of you will see him in New York. Trust me. If you know if he beat him, okay, don't risk your life. He's pressed idiot. They're going to protect him a lot. Okay. 
There are ways you can do it. There are surprises I can see. He's demented. Sometimes he doesn't know where he is. Okay. But every time he remembers where he is, if he captures something, you know, catches where he is, that moment will be that moment that your message will hit him. Let him know that he's a murderer. Okay. And uh, some of you can even say thank you to him if you see him. Okay. Just say, Bokuario, thank you. You are doing a great job. You are dividing Nigeria. You are doing a great job. Just send some message. Say hi to Bokuari uh, if you are right now on ground, okay? Nigeria is done for. Are you with me? Nigeria is done for. What you have right now is the carcass. The carcass of what is about to eat the fan. The shit don't hit the fan already, but people are trying to pretend that he's never hit them. But trust me, now gradual. Somebody said, my ego look out for the after the UN meeting. It will be like, say, wait till be this story along again when Bukhari returns. Whatever it is, I don't think it will be worse than what we have seen. Or just that uh, every day, it just reminds you how worse it is to live in Nigeria or to survive it. Those who love to pretend to deny, right? It's good. You can live in denial. It's great for you, okay? But usually... Even though we don't wish that on you, we will hope that you don't become a victim so that your story will not be a lesson to others as we speak, okay? So they will borrow the money. Trust me, they will borrow the money. They will share the loot. They will share the money. Do all of that. And then the second leg of the assassination of a prominent people in southern Nigeria will kick in. This is not a good news. It is, in fact, not a good thing to say. But we have to say it. Not because it is not good. or be, well, I mean, I don't have to say it because it's good or it's not good. I have to say it because, who knows? Eh? Alerting people, awakening people. That could make a lot of changes. Just decisions of those who should know better, but they are pretending not to, or playing political correctness and the rest of that. When they become victims in the next couple of weeks, we will use their story to tell you that uh, there is nothing to save in Nigeria. Nothing. If you really want to save Nigeria, look at me very well. If you want to save Nigeria, you should begin to join those who are moving, mobilizing, educating, sensitizing people to get a new constitution to start with and peacefully break up Nigeria. If you love Nigeria, but not many people read. No, I don't think there's actually anybody who loves Nigeria for you. People are just patriotic when it is convenient. And those ones who are patriotic Nigerians from abroad, those are the funniest ones, right? They love Nigeria. They will tell you, but well, it's from abroad. Very great uh, stuff. Okay? You can't tell me that your politicians love Nigeria. You can't destroy what you love. You can't treat what you love so badly. You can't abandon what you love to get destroyed. Look at Nigeria. Do you really think anybody loves Nigeria that way? Do you see the sign that Nigeria has ever been loved? If Nigeria was to be a human being, do you really think Nigeria would be a loved person? Or somebody you would pity? That is to tell you that those who are, who are uh, arise or compatriot with you, those who are claiming to be your representatives, decision makers, well, those who make deals for Nigeria in the name of Nigeria, especially these jihadists, the apologists, sympathizer of terrorists in government, who cares no hoot about uh, what the economy becomes or whatever it doesn't become, as long as uh, whatever mm, agenda they are pushing, whatever campaign they are trying to entrench, uh, as long as it is going on in that smoothly, to hell with you and your me being patriotic or not, okay? So to them. That's patriotism. You get what I mean now? So, but look around you. Look around you. Do you really think people will love their country so much? We treat Nigeria the way your past, present leaders, political actors, decision makers, opinion molders, religious leaders, traditional rulers, Student leaders, youth leaders, women leaders, market women, men, women, and the rest of all those people who make up the society. Tell me. 
Do you really see them love Nigeria? Do you see this Nigeria as a country anybody loved? You don't pillage something you love. You don't pillage the land you love. You don't arm terrorists and then at the same time pardon terrorists in the land that you love. You protect the people. You protect the land. You protect the resources. You protect the prosperity of that uh, country. That is what you do when you love a country. Nigeria is a country that those who claim to love Nigeria are looting Nigeria, destroying the, 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 I mean, the future, destroying the generations, the now and the future. That's not love. No, that's not love. And so many of you are pretending to love Nigeria too, waiting for your turn so that you too can be called the senator, honorable governor, excellency, minister, and all that kind of funny, funny titles that gives you your own access, eh? your meal tickets to the table. Some of you are just waiting for your turn. And because of that, you love Nigeria. You turned yourself to unity beggars. You turned blind eyes to all the atrocities that are happening right before you. You justify criminality. You justify genocide, murderous, illegal actions. You justify them because you are waiting for your turn. You are waiting for your turn. Like uh, vultures waiting to feed on a carcass of a dead country. Good luck to that. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time. I'm not taking calls tonight, okay? But we'll take calls some other time. Just know this. We can save ourselves. If you love Nigeria, join others to begin that conversation. Do it, uh, like, you know, maturely. Let's do it like gentlemen, like human beings. The conversation about the breakup of Nigeria, the fiscal restructuring political restructuring and so many other restructuring that people are asking for can be found in a conversation of a breaking up of nigeria peacefully whatever the northern nigeria and the elites have been feeding fat on let those uh, glutonous uh, jobless lazy children of theirs who are who have uh, long throats right now waiting for their turn so that their fathers and their uncles their mothers and their, the rest of them can place them in that same political authority where they will be making decisions for you and me. Let's tell them that uh, the conversation we should be having right now is the conversation on how you're going to work and be better than your parents, your jobless, unproductive parents who destroyed Nigeria. Rather than build it, build you or build the people that you likely lead, they decided to loot everything, to train you so that you can have something to come and loot as well. Maybe we can have that chat. That should be the conversation we should be having, not the conversation about the next election. It should be the, the conversation about the next referendum. That's what I want to talk about. That's what we should be talking about, okay? Not the next election. But good luck to every one of you on whatever you think is right. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Before you go, my friends on YouTube, leave me that thumb up. And I want to say thank you. Thank you. And thank you to every one of you. We crossed that 50,000 mark today. Yes, it took a while. Somebody said, Maya, you should have been more than this. I said, I know, I wish. But it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of support. It's all to all of you who have stood by me. Continue to give your support and everything up to this moment. So thank you. We crossed the 50,000 mark. Now we can look forward to 100,000 mark now. I hope you will make that happen. Share my broadcast. Engage with it. Give that thumb up. Make it feel engaged so that more people will see the message. And trust me, they will stay back even for just one single bite. Right? Thank you so much for your time. I'm going to see you some other time. So you have a good night. Aqui